Welcome back to Sector One, the first stop you should make for your motorsport fix. I'm Sid, I'm joined with Maris and Rhiannon, and today we're going to be talking all about Red Bull. We're going to be talking about the two drivers, Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. Is Checo done? That's the question we've got towards him today. Is, is his second driver role coming to an end? Is he still the best second driver we've seen? Is he doing a good enough job? And then Max Verstappen, is he doing too good of a job at Formula One? Is it getting a little bit boring and a little bit repetitive? We'll be going through all of those. I think we should start on the lower end so we can build up towards it. Let's talk about Sergio Perez first. Firstly, I think we have to give credit where credit's due. He's been an incredible second driver in getting Max Verstappen his two World Championship titles and Red Bull their constructors last year. But now it's going a bit downhill. What do you guys make of it? Do you guys see the, the downward trajectory that he's going on? I mean, for sure, he's definitely <laughs> not been uh, impeccable this season, shall we say. He's had a lot of uh, mistakes, a lot of them quite silly. He's thrown away some good points, some, fo some podium finishes. He's thrown away a lot of Q3s as well recently. So... Um, I think he's definitely not at his peak at the moment. Maris, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's very much sort of he's showing that he's not as consistent as they need him to be because on the off day or at certain tracks, he's good. But across the whole season, he's not really showing that he can transfer the performances between all the different places they race at. Um but I think in terms of being a second driver, he's been quite good in that he's put in at some tracks, he's pushed Max and it's sort of making Max have to improve even further to get away from his teammate. But when you're not even making it into the same qualifying session as your teammate with a car that's miles ahead of the rest of the field, it is a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> It truly is, and I think this second driver conversation truly comes around the the hullabaloo that Rebel have had with their second driver in the past few years. We had Pierre Gasly, who was very quickly thrown out of that seat, and then Alex Albon, who was... He stayed along a little bit longer, but he still kind of had the same treatment there. And while statistically, Checo has had the most peaks, he's also had some of the lowest drops in comparison of performance when you look at Alex and Pierre when they were both at Red Bull. So it's kind of a difficult decision to make because I think Red Bull are truly happy with having him there because he got in the constructors like he was a big part in playing that and there are times when he truly picks up the pieces when Max unfortunately can't get to the top but now I'm thinking missing three Q3 sessions in a row in the fastest car on the grid you, you, you can't even argue with that it's just not good enough what, Rhiannon, what do you think Red Bull should do? Is there a solution? Do we keep Checo? Do we hope that he's going to get out of this pit? What do we do? See, I've thought a lot about this, but I think they just need to see him out, like see his contract out. He's got another season and a half, and I think I don't think they should replace him because, I mean, we're all thinking... I'll say what we're all thinking. We're all thinking that Daniel Ricciardo should take that seat and we can have the dream team back together, but... I think that would be a huge risk in itself because although we know Daniel's a really good driver and he's really talented, we've not seen that over the past couple of years. So I think it would be a huge risk to cancel Checo's contract or drop him back down to Alpha to to have what you hope is going to be the old Daniel back. So I think they just need to see it out. And as long as it's not costing them too much, I think this season, even with his performance being a bit, rubbish in certain races I think they just need to it's not costing them too much they're still on track to win the constructors and win um, the drivers championship but I think say come into next season if if it's really going to cost them some some good championship points where they are going to count a bit more than this year then they should maybe look at a mid-season swap Maris would you agree with Rhiannon there yeah, I think so. I think because of how far ahead Red Bull are at the moment, Checo having a few bad performances isn't greatly impacting on their Constructors' Championship. But I think, especially next year and moving forward, we know how fast Aston Martin are, and especially with Alonso. And I think if Lance Stroll has had, had as good 
performances as Alonso, Red Bull might be worrying a bit more because they might be closer to them in the constructors. I think Alonso and Perez aren't actually that far apart anymore um, in the driver's standings. So I think it'll probably depend on how far away they are because right now they're getting away with it. But in years to come, when obviously the teams will catch up and we've seen Aston Martin take a massive leap, when that happens, I think they'll really have to think about it because, you know, like they want to have a clear second driver because it makes it so much more easier in the team politically and sort of between the two garages. But also they want to have the, the Constructors' Championship secured and be able to rely on both drivers to do well. Um, but obviously they sort of owe Perez a lot for Max's first championship and the Constructors' like last year it was a lot down to him as well so it's a really tough decision because if you then kick out a driver that's actually done a lot for you then it's sort of a bit like you're saying younger drivers can't do it and now you're saying even the experienced ones can't do it it's sort of where do they go from there well let's take a look at Checo's performances this season his highest has obviously been a win he's had two wins this season and his lowest has been p16 few p2s in there few mid mid grid positions too but it's just not great and his qualifying reflects that too his qualifying's even worse he started at the back of the grid twice he started very close to the back of the grid multiple times too whereas the lowest max has qualified as p15 and that was on a really bad day that that was a day when you can't not necessarily make excuses for him but you can see why it happened and i know checo's had a few of those too but last weekend out in canada i couldn't give you a reason for checo's performance being the way it was i couldn't give you a, a solid a solid reason that you'd be like oh yeah okay, i get you mate it's okay it's okay um so it's just a case of if the performance isn't there surely the contract shouldn't be too he's okay for now i don't think we need to jump on any big and make any rash decisions yet but i think it's certainly something which we can start thinking about and let's think about replacements in the nicest way possible. Um, so the two top contenders seem to be Mr. Daniel Ricciardo, the reserve driver for Red Bull, and also Liam Lawson, who's currently absolutely smashing it in Super Formula. So you've got a young gun and you've got someone with a lot of experience and who everyone loves. You can't not love Daniel Ricciardo. So as Helmut Marco and Christian Horner, who do you pick? Do you want the teammate that Max Verstappen crashed into before and had a lot of dramas with but also a very wholesome friendship with in Daniel Ricciardo or do you want to nurture a new talent Rhiannon you were Christian Horner Maris you were Helmut Marco. tell me what you're thinking <laughs> I'm thinking um, I think there you go sorry um I think for now if it was literally right now at this moment I think I would put Daniel Ricciardo in mainly because they're so far ahead that if they were to squabble, I don't think it would make a big difference right now because if they were to have a bit of a crash or something happened, their car is so good that it wouldn't matter. Sort of like Mercedes in 2016 or whatever, they could have a crash and it wouldn't really affect their championship status. Um, and it's quite nice to have two drivers that push each other as well, even though they are so far ahead of everybody else. It would be, I think, good for us as fans to see an actual championship battle. Not that I'm saying Ricardo's better than Perez. I mean, we don't, we've never seen them race in the same car. But I feel like because ricardo has been in that team before, he probably knows Max very well and how he drives and things. That it would provide us with a really good battle at the same time. And Christian Horner, Rhiannon. <laughs> I mean, I completely agree. I think it would be silly for them to put Liam Lawson in there as much as he has an incredible talent and he's got so much pace in the nicest way that's what Alpha Tauri's for so that he can find his feet and learn what he needs to learn about Formula One before stepping up to to the main team because these are some like some crucial years for Red Bull if they want to bank some like some wins and some pole positions and try and make a bit more of history and within the team then you're definitely going to get that with an, ex an experienced driver with two experienced drivers and Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo that I think it would be a huge risk at this moment in time when development and testing is so important just because we're at the start of the new regulations I just think you would just go with what you know 
Well, obviously, Daniel Ricciardo would be a potential to go into the Red Bull seat, but there have also been rumours swirling around that Daniel Ricciardo could be going back to AlphaTauri having a seat there. And I don't know how you guys feel about that, but when I think about it, I just see it as such a backward step. He's, he's the Rebel Reserve driver. He's so experienced. He's been at Red Bull. Would it not be a bit of a kick in the teeth, in those beautiful Daniel Ricciardo teeth, to go and sit back down at Alpha Tauri? I, I don't know. If I was Daniel Ricciardo, I just don't think I'd be too chuffed about it. But maybe he's that eager to get back into a Formula One car, but he will take anything that he can get his hands on. Would you, Maris, would you go back to Alpha Tauri if you were Daniel Ricciardo? I don't know. I think because of how his McLaren, sort of his time at McLaren went, and because they were sort of they were the height of the midfield at the time, but they've sort they weren't with the top runners. I think him going back to a midfield sort of team, I'm worried about that. What that would do for him in general because of what happened at McLaren and whether he's going to sort of regress back into that or, you know, I think it would be really tough to do that, and especially as you know, we know him as a race winner and he's made sort of a step up to Red Bull as if he's going to move into that seat. And I think it would be a real shame to, for him to go back to Alpha Tauri, especially as they seem to have gone backwards in the last few years as well. It's not like they were when Gasly had his win. Now they're they're barely getting into the points. Like poor Yuki's been 11th for God knows how many races in a row. So yeah, I feel like for him to progress his career and not sort of have a repeat of McLaren he probably needs to wait until he can get into a Red Bull or a top performing car. Rhiannon this is a complete separate conversation well not really it's still affiliated with it but Daniel Ricciardo when he left Red Bull it wasn't necessarily on the best of terms Red Bull weren't expecting Daniel to go to Renault and it was kind of a little bit tense particularly with um, Cyril and Christian so do you think I know Daniel's back in the Red Bull camp now they all seem so happy it seems like a lovely little family do you think there's still a little bit of bad blood a little bit of animosity in the air say Daniel was to start driving for Red Bull again do you think they're over that now I think they're definitely over that I think Daniel came out the McLaren seat and they had the choice of any team to be a reserve driver and I think the fact that he chose Red Bull said enough and the fact that they've welcomed him home with open arms basically I think it's a bit more maturity now I think they can all see that everyone in the team will have matured whether it's Christian I mean maybe not Helmut but <laughs> definitely Christian <laughs> uh, Max and Daniel himself and I think that's definitely helped I think if he went back after Renault then maybe there would be a bit more tension in the air but I think everyone just wants the best for him now and I, I think you can see that with the way that Christian talks about him in interviews, he's literally his child <laughs> Well we will be seeing Daniel Ricciardo, well not literally unfortunately but Daniel Ricciardo will be in the Red Bull after Silverstone doing three days of the Pirelli tyre tests so hopefully He's incredible behind that wheel, has the best performance of his life, sets brand new records on track, and hopefully we'll see him back on track during the Formula One race weekend very, very soon. Now let's move on to someone who's on the grid and at the very, very front of it, you probably wouldn't believe he's still there. He's that far in advance. Let's talk about Max Verstappen. He's just winning all the time. There's not much else to say. He's just just doing goat behaviour things, winning all of the races, starting from pole, not having the best pit stops, but, but we'll forget about that because that's not necessarily all on his shoulders. But he's having a great time, not literally. Figu mm, well, he's kind of having a great time because he's winning races, but he's probably not enjoying it too much because he's not having to do too much to get it. Max Verstappen in a complete league of his own at the minute. Maris, what do you think it's like? How is it for you being able to actually witness this? I honestly think it's incredible and people who say it's boring, you've it literally people have lived through Schumacher era and Vettel and Hamilton. It's the exact same thing. It's just that no one is good enough in the second Red Bull seat to make it anything else. And people are obviously going to look back on it and be like, it was an incredible achievement. And, you know, he's starting P15 and finishing on the podium or in Miami, he literally won the race and overtook his teammate. So 
clearly he's such an incredible driver and the fact they've had to swap out that second driver so many times just to get them to keep up with him or get anywhere near him is just incredible and I don't think I've I've never heard of that happening before where they've had to constantly swap because they're saying this isn't good enough because you're being compared to Max Verstappen um but I think it's, it's entertaining at times because we get little snippets of radio call that he says and I think he is enjoying that but I completely get like you said he's probably a little bit bored because there's not much to do um but yeah, it's, I think it's slightly different to other dominations we've had where it was Lewis and Nico or it was Vettel and Alonso where there's been a bit of sort of like, oh, this person could beat them. But I think you've just you've just got to admire it because the point of Formula One is to be the best. And the reason he's in that car is because he is. And honestly, I genuinely think at this rate he's going to beat his own win record this year because it is just incredible. You could literally start that man last and he'd probably still win. Rhiannon, would you agree with that? How are you feeling witnessing Max Verstappen dominate Formula One right now? I mean, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> this is like all I've wanted the past couple of years, but I think it also is not boring, but it doesn't make it as exciting. And I think you see that from Max as well. Max is a driver that wants to be pushed and wants to challenge. He doesn't want to be out 20 seconds ahead of everyone. He wants to be having battles like fighting for DRS like he did with Charlie last year like he wants he wants that challenge and I think if it continues the way it is with Red Bull being so dominant then that's not something that's going to keep him in the sport like he's he's after that challenge and there's drivers that want to be 20 seconds up the road every single every single week I mean teams want that that's what it just makes you look better but I think for him he really wants that challenge um, and like Mary said, they swapped the number two driver how many times and they just can't keep up. I would completely agree with you on the whole Max Verstappen getting potentially a little bit bored at the front of the grid because he is one of those drivers who wants to be winning because he's had to fight for it, he's had to overtake, he's had to actually race. And I truly don't see him sticking around that much longer if he doesn't get the competition because I feel like he's just that way inclined. His brain is wired that way where he needs competition to almost be fulfilled in racing. Championships are great and all. He can carry on winning as many as he wants, but if you're not having to completely fight for it, it might not be as entertaining for him. Obviously, Lewis did it, but Lewis kind of had, he had Valtteri Bottas there. He had Nico Rosberg for some of the time. He had maybe not a championship challenger all the time, but he had someone to battle with on track. And Max, unfortunately, at the minute, is not really getting to experience that. And I know, like you said, some drivers probably dream of being able to just win a championship like that because no one's fighting you. It's just clear track. You're on your way. Cross the checkered flag. But I feel like he's just not that way inclined. Neris, you mentioned Max beating his own records this year. In Canada, he obviously equaled Senna's 41 wins. And the records ahead of him are Alain Prost, Sebastian Vettel, Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton. Did you know that it is possible for him to fly by Alain Prost and Sebastian Vettel's win records easily by the end of the season? I think it's going to happen. I can see it in the stars now. He's going to be one, two, the third most successful Formula One driver by the end of the season in terms of wins. It's just, it's just written in the stars. Do you know how difficult that is to say written in the stars and not break out into song? <laughs> um, anyway, Max Verstappen winning. Maris, you touched on it. Are you personally bored when you're watching Formula One because of Max Verstappen's outstanding performance? I think a little bit. I think especially because of 2021 and because of how amazing that was, I definitely compare it to that and think, oh my God, that was so amazing. Even last year when it was Max and Charles, and you had something, there's sort of some sort of jeopardy about who's going to win, but you're basically looking at a race for P2, which, you know, you get some amazing racing and things, but it doesn't feel as, as big of a thing to watch if you already know who's going to win. It's sort of like watching a tennis match or watching football and going, yeah, they're definitely going to win. Like if and nothing like mechanical happens or no one gets injured, like that's it basically, which I think is a bit sad for the sport, but you've got, it's happened loads and loads of times, but 
I don't know it. I'm a proclaimed Hamilton fan and I can fully appreciate people literally hated the hybrid era because of Mercedes. So it's sort of re replicating itself, but yeah, it would be nice to go into a race. I think I've lost a little bit of excitement watching it because you want to have a battle for the lead and it opens up weight, loads more strategy and they've got to really think about it. And especially if you see the best driver currently being bored himself, if the if he's getting bored, the fans are sort of like, well, this isn't this isn't great. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how it goes in the next few years. Rhiannon, you're a bit of a Max Verstappen fan yourself. Are you getting a little bit bored? I definitely. It's not as exciting as it used to be. I think, like Mary says, when you compare it to to the twenty twenty one season, like that was just probably the best season in Formula One's history, like arguably. And I think at the time, like the sport was growing so much and like it was getting so much coverage and that season really helped boost it that I think the the seasons that have followed haven't been as exciting and I think that's where F one are gonna struggle to retain the fans that they've got from that. And I think it's just a wee bit like boring in the nicest way. I mean, it's great to see, and I really like how he's catching up with records and he's like making history. But a race for P two isn't the same as a race for P one. I also feel like you both touched on it there about how twenty twenty one was incredible from start to end, battles all the time, particularly for the championship, of course. And that obviously accumulated so many new fans. And I think because of that, we're left with fans who haven't experienced Formula One before 2021, who are now just getting a little bit bored. I fear that some of them might just been been off Formula One and not bother watching it anymore because unfortunately they've not had to sit through years of other drivers dominating. So unfortunately, they can't necessarily enjoy the sport as much as what they thought it was from 2021 if that makes any sense because obviously Maris you touched on it as well we've had loads of people dominate in the past Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna, Alain Prost, Nicky Lauda, James Hunt we've had Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso for two years so we have had these periods in Formula One's history it's a rich part of it that there'll always be one guy who comes in and just wins absolutely everything and you're like come on Leave some for the rest of them. Just just let everyone else fight for it at least. So unfortunately, it's just a part of Formula One. And I think eventually Max Verstappen will get too bored. He'll end up retiring and will get more battles very, very soon. And obviously the cars are all starting to catch up. Mercedes are improving. Ferrari aren't really, but it's Ferrari <laughs> at the minute. Aston Martin are incredible this season. Not quite where they want to be, but almost there. We're seeing great things happening. We've still got upgrades to come. There is still faith. I still have hope. I'm not giving up yet. Um, do you guys have faith in Aston Martin and Mercedes? Are you convinced we might have a bit of a battle or are you just stuck on Max? I think we do. And my hope is that because of how much Max has dominated, when Alonso wins, which I'm I'm convinced myself that it's going to happen this year. When? Not if. It's, it's going to be amazing and i think because of how much red bull have dominated if we get an off win like like ocon's podium in monaco if we get a win from a different team it's going to make it that much better in a way because i think if you had crazy races all the time it is exciting but when you have a one-off like you had gasly win in italy and then you had ricardo win the year after it's so amazing because it's so unexpected and it's so nice to see the drivers so happy as well so i think even though it's a bit frustrating, I fully believe Lance is going to win. He better win. Um, and it will just make it so much better when he does. Rhiannon, thoughts? I have faith, but I don't have faith this year. <laughs> I think you could probably get a one-off <laughs> win from like a Mercedes or an Aston Martin because it's going so well for Red Bull, but it can't go well every weekend. There is going to be a weekend or two where it is just not going to go as planned and if it goes not as planned a weekend at Checos dancing around in P19 then I think that's a, a godsend for Aston Martin or Mercedes I think that whatever race that ends up being it'll be the the most exciting one of the season 
Well, let's take a look at social media and see what other people are saying. We put some polls out, we put some questions out. Let's have a quick look. On the question, are you bored of seeing Max Verstappen win all the time? Surprisingly, only 60% of people agreed with that. I truly thought it would be a lot higher of a percentage. And in their reasoning, someone has said it would be cool to see someone else win, but there are good battles elsewhere on the grid that I can completely agree with. Connor said it's damaging for the sport and that Max's comments suggest he feels the same. He wants competition. We've obviously touched on that. Completely agree. Not necessarily damaging for the sport, but I do see max wanting some competition i think and it then we've also had damaging some... for the for the newer fans instead of the older fans i feel like the older <laughs> fans that you've got are are here for the long haul but like see the fans that have just started getting into it from like drive to survive in that just in the past year or two i think it might not keep them and you can completely see where they're coming from as well because what they saw, the advert they saw for Formula One was exciting from start to finish, overtaking, battles for the win, you know, crashes. That's what Formula One was in 2021. But unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. So you can completely see why. Um, final one for Max Verstappen. Someone said, the FIA need to change the regulations like they did when Mercedes dominated. And that will make it more exciting if we do that. We will see. We will see. I Let's mean, talk. we're only we're only like what a year and a half into Max's domination. Let's just chill out yeah. a little bit. Mercedes had like seven, eight years, and we're only sort of at the start. If we're assuming him to dominate, so I think we'll be okay. I I, I agree with you, Maris. <laughs> Let's go to the Checo question then. We asked: Is Checo still the perfect second driver? And seventy-eight percent of voters said no. They do not believe that Checo is the perfect second driver anymore. And people want to see. One person wants to see the smiley Aussie, Daniel Ricciardo. Kathy has said she wants to see Charles Leclerc in the Red Bull seat. And honestly, I think he needs it. It will be good for his soul. <laughs> It'll be good for his heart. And then someone said that they think Checo has made one too many mistakes now. And he didn't even come back through in Canada. So he needs to go well we've clearly got some very diverse opinions on it let us know in the comments one has max verstappen's domination got boring already a year and a half in and number two who should replace checo if checo was to leave daniel ricardo liam lawson or like kathy said even a wild card like charles leclerc we want to know well, it's Austria this weekend. We're at the Red Bull Ring, so you've got lots to look forward to. And I'm sure you'll see some great Red Bull Racing performances. You should see our predictions. Wait till our predictions come out, because some of those people from the team have gone absolutely bonkers this week, and they think some crazy stuff's going to happen. So time will tell. Make sure you follow in the socials at Sector One Motorsport and S1 Motorsport on Twitter, because they don't let you have long enough usernames. We'll be back very, very soon. We'll digest the Austrian Grand Prix. See you later.